Well, what's going on guys? Eddie here, Cornell Bagger Views, back again with vlog number eight, I wanna say. Uh, it is Wednesday, we're gonna do another blind raw. I won't have a vlog from Triple Crown. Uh, I just didn't get the footage that I really wanted to get, but it was a fun event. I did pretty solid in the big blind raw. I took like ninth overall out of um, 90 teams. And then on Sunday in singles, I took 17th. Me and Chris didn't do so good in doubles, but you know, overall it was, a, it was a fun weekend, but the vlog footage just didn't really turn out how I wanted to. So unable to really put a video together. So we're back again with the Wednesday night blind raw, which is a fun event. I'm glad to be back. Glad to be back home. Glad to hang out with the local guys again. A lot of us went down to the big tournament, but back to have some fun. Hopefully we get a good turnout. I know last week we had a smaller turnout because I think everybody was preparing for this big weekend and there's leagues and tournaments and just so much going on. So hopefully decent sized turnout today on uh, our Wednesday night, you know, hopefully in the 25 plus range, but got a lot of fun bags to throw tonight. Uh, hopefully hang on people. Got some new hats, got my CBR hats, did a run for some locals here, but we will have some hats coming in the future. I know some of you guys have requested them, uh, which is really, really cool. So met a lot of you people out at the Triple Crown, super fun, but uh, you know, let's get out and play another blind draw. You know, let's try to have, hopefully, you know, we do good in pool play and like with all blind draws, you can't help who you get as a partner, but who knows, maybe we'll get some good luck tonight and uh, recoup some funds from the weekend, you know, get some money back from all the money spent this last weekend. But I you know, appreciate you guys stopping by for another vlog. Let's get into it and I'll catch you guys when I get out to Super Bowl. All right, guys, we're at Super Bowl. We got everything set up. We got the stream running. Uh, we're about to do knockout here. We've been warming up for a little while. I'm gonna be doing all my recaps in the echo chamber today because it is negative 17 with like negative 30 wind chill today. Really don't feel like going outside. So sorry about the echo, but I'm gonna be doing it in here. But you know, we're at the blind draw. We had we got a lot of people from out of town actually. There's a group of four from Kansas City that are up here. There's another group from Illinois that's up here, just happened to be up here for work. So we got 30 people, I think, tonight. So really nice turnout. Uh, a lot of new throwers, people we don't have never played with, which always makes it fun. But 30 people is a really good turnout. So uh, we'll, we're getting everybody checked in. We're gonna have knockout here in a second. And then after knockout, we'll get into round one. So uh, catch you guys after knockout's done. We start the knockout recap by fast forwarding up until the uh, top four players are left. So we start here with John, the first one up to throw a bag. And then John happens to throw it a little bit off to the right. So now we got Chow, my doubles partner, who's finally made it to the top four of a knockout. He seems to always get knocked out early here, but he's able to follow him in. So now we're down to Luke, Chris, and Jamie. After Chris makes his, Jamie is the next one up and hangs barely off the back of the hole with the pro performance go. So Chow's back up here again with the chance to eliminate another player and Chow is able to make another one in a row. So we're down to the final two people, Chow and Chris. The very next shot, Chris is up throwing surefires as well and his barely hangs off to the right. So now immediately it's next person to make it wins. Chow wastes no time, gets up and makes his third one in a row to finally take down a knockout win. All right, so like you guys know, I don't play knockout because I don't like spending the money to do it, but Chow, doubles partner, Luke, got finally got a knockout. He's been in the finals like a lot of times using the finals at our last big tournament uh, and got knocked out there, but he finally gets one. So it wasn't a lot of money, like 50, 60 bucks or something, but still a nice way to start the night, pays for the night. So congrats, Chow, good job on the knockout. But we're getting started here into uh, pool play. So like usual, four rounds of pool play into double elimination bracket. It's gonna be a little bit of a longer night tonight with the 30 people, but Gonna be a really, really fun time. So let's get the, there's a lot of people out here that I haven't seen in a little while. So I'm excited to talk to them and just hang out and hang out with you guys on the stream. So catch you guys after round one of pools. In the very first round of game one, I decided to start off with a bang, missing the first one off the back left and my opponent follows me left. But I immediately give it right back by going off the left side of the board. The rust really showing the first round here. My opponent makes his second bag and I miss off to the left again. He's able to sneak around nicely. And I'm not sure what I go for here. Maybe a collect, but I miss off the side again. And when he's able to go on the board, we give up a nice little eight to two round to start. So we start the game down six to zero. After my partner gives up a one, we're now down seven to zero, and my opponent starts with his first bag right up the middle, and I'm able to follow him nicely. I'm throwing the prototype Minnesota tailgate bags here. My opponent goes off the left. I throw a nice little blocker. He tries to push through. I go for the cut shot around, hit a nice little cut right to left. So I got my first three in. He throws a really nice push collect here. I can go in for the four bag, which I'm able to, to get the nice 12 to nine round. Get three points, so we're on the board, now down seven to three. 
The very next round, my partner's got first bag here, and he starts with his first one right off the back of the board. I think he accidentally threw fast sides, which is lightening off the back, but Matt misses his first one off the back left, but my partner follows him left. So holes open here, Matt's able to slide in nicely when my partner goes off the right side. So laying with a one there after three bags, Matt can really capitalize here by going in on his third bag, which he's able to do. My partner trying to limit the damage ends up going off the back for a one point round and Matt finishes up for the 10. So it's a 10 to one, giving him nine points. So now we're down 16 to three. My opponent has got first bag again and he starts with his first one a little bit off the back right. So an opportunity to score when I give it right back, missing off the right as well. He slides up the middle and I try to follow, which I'm able to nicely. So we're tied at four after two bags. He uses my bag as a bumper and is able to sneak in the hole. My bag actually kicks a little bit on me and he's able to sneak through. And I actually go for the left to right cut here and kind of miss it right off the back. So I end up giving up a five, a 10 to five round there. So very, very quick game. We end up losing the game at 21 to three. All right, game one of pools. Yeah, it didn't go well. <laughs> 22 to three, I think we lost. I shot a two the first round, which felt terrible because in warm-ups I had a four-bagger, but whatever. We gave up an eight to start, and then uh, my partner struggled a little bit, gave up some big rounds, but I didn't shoot too good. I had a four, I went two, four-bagger, five, I think, and the game was over. So it was just up and down, not super consistent, but that's okay, it was round one. Just looking to play, have some fun. There's a lot of people here, a lot of newbies. Um, so it's really gonna be who ends up with the best team, best partner, because uh, there's gonna be a lot of a lot of up and down swings on the teams for sure, depending on where you end up in the standings. So not super good round one. I pr so what is five plus 12, 17, 19 divided by three. So I shot like not good, like a 6.33 PPR. Whatever, we'll get it back game two. I think we play against Chow game two. So uh, we'll catch you guys after uh, game two of pools. In the first round of round two pools, I'm shooting against my normal doubles partner, Chow. I start with a nice little blocker to start the round. Forces him off the left side. My blocker stays in, but I miss mine off the back right. But after he pushes me off and knocks me in, I'm able to throw another nice block. So he's laying three here. I could push through for nine, which I'm able to nicely. And he misses his fourth one off the right. So right on the first round, get a nice nine to four round, take a 5-0 lead to start the game. A couple rounds later, the score is now five to three. We're still winning, but they have first bag. Chow starts with his first one off the back left. So opportunity here to score. I'm able to again throw a nice blocker and get in Chow's way. He pushes and replaces nicely. I try to go for the same thing, end up blocking behind him a tad. When he goes off the back, another big opportunity for me here, but I push, try to push through hard and end up going off the back as well. He's able to finish in for the seven, and mine comes up a tad short. So definitely a missed opportunity that round. Give up a seven to five for two points, so the game is now tied five to five. The very next round, they now have first bag, and uh, my opponent starts off with one nicely in the hole. My partner here starts with his first one on the front board. So already down three after one bag when his opponent keeps the pressure on by making the second bag. My partner misses off the side, now going down six. She finishes up nicely again on the third bag. A nice blocker for my partner on the fourth bag, forcing her to lay on the board for the 10. So my partner goes for the big push, misses off the right. So that's a 10 to one round, giving up nine points. So now we're down 14 to five. Fast forwarding four rounds, we're now down 15 to five after a couple washes. And Luke starts with a nice little blocker, forcing me off the right side as I'm unable to push through. He goes to the push and replace a little bit off the side, but I give it right back to him and bring his bag closer. So just all in all a terrible bag. He's able to then collect it nicely. I'm able to follow in, but the damage is already done. Luckily, he gives me one back by missing off the back, and I'm able to finish in. But still, the 10-8 to 8 round, uh, definite mistakes in that round, especially on the second bag. But I give up two more points. We go down 17-5, to 5, and the next round, my partner gives up a 4. So we lose the game at 21-5. to 5. All right, game two done against Chow on the stream. I scored a 5 the first round, and then I don't think we scored the rest of the game. Uh, you know... My partner, I think it took him to round four or five to get one in the hole. Um, just, you know, giving up some rounds here. And then I gave up some rounds to Chow, going for some dumber shots, trying to score big points. When you got a partner that can't score a lot of points, you're like, I have to score. So instead of taking my three, I'm going for a six, something like that. But either way, we lost that one too. So definitely firmly in the bottom of the standings. Uh, not the worst place to be tonight, though. It should be, you know, like, we'll, so we'll see how games three and four go. Try to get to the top of the bottom at least. 
uh, end up with a good partner, I think that's going to be how we're going to do well in the blind draw. But either way, keep having fun, uh, hanging out with some people. But I'll catch up with you guys. Oh, I don't even know what I shot that game. I don't know, probably seven. I don't know, not that good. But either way, I'll uh, catch up with you guys after round three of pools. In the first round of game three of pools, we got a really good game here. It's me and Roger against Jamie and Jose. All four of us very solid players. So Jamie starts with this first one in. I miss off to the right. We're throwing Roger's nuked surefires, and they're throwing Jose's uh, omegas. But he starts with his first three in. I'm able to follow my third one in, sitting two points here. He's able to finish up the four-bagger. I could finish up for the 10. So early 2-0 lead that they take on us after the first round. Fast forwarding four rounds, we're now down five to zero. They still have the first bag. And Jose starts with his first one that hits the dead spot on the board short. So opportunity here for Roger as he steps out and hits a nice around shot with the fast side of Surefires. Jose tries to go up and over and misses off to the left and Roger is able to continue up the side. So that block really getting in Jose's way. He's able to get over it with the third bag. Roger stays nice and consistent around the bag. And on the fourth bag here, Jose again off to the left. So Roger with a big opportunity, and he's able to finish up for the 12. So 12 to 6 round, getting us the 6 points back. Instantly lead change, we're up 6 to 5. After I get 2, and then Roger gives up 2, we're now up 8 to 7. A couple rounds later, they have first bag, and Jamie starts with his first one up the middle and in. I'm able to follow him here up the middle on my first bag as well. Into his second bag, he actually pushes it off to the right of Taz. So opportunity to score here as I make in my second bag. Then his third one actually goes off the back. So really big opportunity. I use his bag as a bumper to make in my third bag to sit nine. And when he misses up to the right, he lays a five. I'm able to finish in for the four bagger. For the 12 to five, giving us seven points. So big round, we go up 15 to seven. After Roger and Jose wash, it's still 15-7. I got the first bag. And I stay nice and consistent up the middle with the surefires. Jamie here misses his first one short left, and I'm able to bully it out of the way. So a decision here if he wants to go out for it, he decides to just give it up. Makes in his second bag. Third bag I'm able to make in as well. He kind of misses off to the left side again, and I'm able to finish up my four pack. He's able to go in here to limit the damage, but it's still a 12-day round. We get four more points, and we go up 19-7. to The very next round, Roger's able to get the couple points we need, so we win the game 24-7. All right, we finished uh, round three of pools, and uh, we won that one e nah, not easily, but we played against, it was a really fun game, actually, because uh, it was me and Roger versus Jamie and uh, Jose, all really, really good players. So I think I played up to my competition there. I shot a 10.4 PPR that game. I really just didn't miss that many bags. Uh, me and Roger took that one 22 to 8, 5, something like that. Uh, we shot really, really well. Uh, it's fun to finally shoot good, throwing his surefires. He shot really well as well. So it's good to get a win. Uh, because of the first two games being so low, we're almost guaranteed to be in the bottom, but we want to win the next one to get top of the bottom, you know, uh, regardless of, you know, standings. And so we just want to do as well as we can to try to get as many points as we can to try to get, you know, closer to the best partner or people that have taken the top five. So uh, nice to get a win under the belt. Hopefully we can continue that, but I'll catch you guys after game four. In game four, I get paired up with my doubles partner, Chow, against Alani and Christy. But in round one, they got first bag. She misses his first one off the back right, and Chow throws a little bit of a short left blocker. Christy gets around nicely right to left, and Chow is able to clean up his two bags into the hole here. So then Christy's able to droop in her third bag. Chow stays consistent up the middle. And on her fourth bag, she actually front boards. So opportunity for points here. Chow misses the hole, but still gets a 10-7 to 7 round, getting us three points to start. So we start up 3-0. to zero. After I score two points, we're up 5-0. to zero. Luke's got the first bag here. And he starts nice and consistently up the middle. We're throwing his pink surefires. They're throwing Lonnie's orange surefires. So like I've said before, a lot of people in this area throw surefires. But Christy misses her second one, first one off to the right. And Chow's able to stay consistent after Christy makes her second bag. Chow again, right up the middle. Christy off to the side, and Chow finally finishes up his four bagger. Christy's able to limit the damage by making in the fourth bag, but still a 12 date round, giving us four more points. So we start the game up nine to zero. Fast forwarding three rounds, the score is now 11 to one when Chow starts with his first one up in the middle. Christy then. Makes her first one as well to follow. Chow throws a really nice blocker here, which is very effective against Christy. She tries to go through and misses off the back. Chow's able to sneak around and leave his blocker in place, really getting in her way. 
She misses a little bit off the left, knocking Chow in, and Chow is able to sneak in without touching her bag. So with her laying a four, she ends up going on and not in the hole for a five. So it's a 12 to five round for seven more points. Chow really carrying me in this game, but we're up 18 to one. The next round, it's my turn to give up a big round as per usual on once on the night, but I missed my first one. Short left going for the blocker. He takes over the lane nicely. I go for a right to left cut, missing to the left, so it cuts right in front of his bag. Gives him an opportunity to shoot it. Hits a really nice airmail first bag. I go to try to cut again and hit the nice cut shot around his bag. He goes up again and hits a really nice airmail drag. So really showing off on me down there with the nice couple airmails, but... I ask him, do you think I can get out and get that? And he's like, no, just try to slide in. And I immediately miss off the back for the five-point round, and Lonnie sneaks around nicely. So 12-5 to round with a nice couple shots from Lonnie there, giving him seven points back. So now we're up 18-8. to One round later, Chow gets a point, so we're up 19-8. to I got the first bag, and I start with the blocker that I was trying to do the round before. Lonnie tries to block down and misses off to the right, giving me a nice angle to cut. I end up pushing into my bags just a tad, forcing Lonnie to try to block behind. He misses off to the right. I flip the fast side and try to push everything through and miss off to the right. Really disappointed in that shot as I had a big chance to take an opportunity here. He blocks behind, so I immediately go up for the airmail, and I hit the backside airmail without dragging a bag. So he has to go airmail without touching my bags ends up knocking one of mine in. So seven to three round, but we get the four points we need. So we win the game 23 to eight. All right, so we finished game four of pools. I got paired up with my partner, Chow. We played against another solid team, Lonnie and Christy. Oh, we played pretty solid. I gave up a seven to Lonnie uh, for a 12 to five, but Chow shot really well. Um, so we won the game pretty easily, 23 to eight. So we should be in a pretty good spot in the standings. I'll throw the standings up on the screen. There's still a lot of games going on, but I'd say somewhere around 19th place, something like that. But uh, we'll see exactly where we end up, who we get matched up with, and then it's all about the bracket. Hopefully we get a solid partner and then you make a good run. But either way, having a good time, uh, having some fun seeing people, really good turnout of people, but I'll be on the stream regardless, um, talking to you guys and hanging out. So uh, we're gonna do bomb box here in between, but then we'll start up winner's bracket. So I'll catch you guys after first game of winners. Before bracket starts, we draw for the bomb box and we pull Roger and first bag he makes perfectly in the hole. I believe this is for right around $120 a bag. The second bag looks really good and lips off the side. The third bag uh, gets away from a little bit and goes off the right, but his distance is really solid. So going into the last bag, he's got a shot to make two of them and he drills the last airmail. So two out of four, not bad for the bomb box for Roger. So I got Bruce as a partner for the bracket. So we're in winners round one. We'll fast forward up to round three. We're down three to zero when the opponent starts with this first one. Nice slide in. Bruce throws a nice block, which immediately messes with his opponent, forcing forcing him off the back left. After some people walk by here, Bruce prepares up his second shot. He switches to fast side and ends up missing the push a little off the back left, but block still lays in place. His opponent knocks it in, so now Bruce has opened up here for points. He makes in his third bag. His opponent finishes up for the 7, and Bruce is able to finish up for the 10. So a nice 10-7 to seven round gets the 3 points back. We tie the game up 3-3. Three to three. The very next round, I got first bag, and I start with my first bag as a nice blocker. So against Randy, he likes going for rolls and airmails and whatnot, so blockers was definitely my plan. He tries to block behind. I instantly go for the cut shot. My cut kind of hangs up on the back of the hole a little bit. Mine, pro- My gray surefires probably would have fell, but his are a little bit less broken in. I go for the cut again, miss it a little bit short. Randy again goes for the roll, but he misses off the back left. So I ask Bruce here, do you think I can push all this through? Should I go for the airmail? He tells me to go for the big push. I end up pushing it a little bit too hard. I knock my front bag in, but the back bag gets pinned. Randy, after though, he misses his fourth bag. So it's still an eight to four round. We get four points. So we start the game up seven to three. After my partner washes out the round, we're still up seven to three. I still got first bag. And I start with my first bag again, going for that first bag block, forcing Randy to go for his roll shot, which is what I wanted him to go for. I then push through, knocking my bag close to the hole, and Randy pulls it in for me. So up two on the round, just from that blocker, I'm able to make in the third bag, and he bounces in the third one as well. I'm able to finish up the four-bagger, bullying his bag out of the way, and he misses a tad off to the right. So it's a 12-8 to round, four more points, so we start up 11-3. to The very next round, my partner Bruce has the first bag here, and he starts with his first bag, 
as a nice up the middle shot to start the round. So his opponent then misses off the back. So big opportunity here for points. Bruce slides in the second bag nicely and his opponent follows. He's throwing only the fast side of the surefire. So definitely more hole friendly. Bruce throws a nice little short block. His opponent pushes through nicely and then Bruce is able to finish up the nice four pack. So guaranteed at least three points and his opponent's able to make the last bag for the 12 to nine round, three more points. So we're up 14 to three. Very next round, I have the first bag and I start again nicely up the middle. Randy's able to follow with his first bag as well. I stay consistent, keep the pressure on, force him to make every bag. He misses off to the right and I go for a left to right cut, getting nicely in the way. He goes for the roll and misses a little bit off the side. I again go for the left to right cut. Not enough angle, but still knock my bag in and his bag somehow hangs up on the back of the hole. So finish up with a 10 to six round, four more points. So we're up 18 to three. Fast forwarding four rounds, the score is now 19 to eight. I have first bag and I start nicely up the middle. Randy then goes for the block. I immediately go for the left to right cut, but I miss off to the side. Randy with another short shot forces me up for the block behind. I'm setting up for the fourth bag airmail. He hits a really nice roll. I go up for the airmail and hit a perfect airmail, forcing him to go in to save the game. He rolls off the side, so we're looking at an eight to six round. The two points we need, so we win the game at 21 to eight. All right, round one of winner's bracket done. Uh, we won it 21 to eight. Uh, we shot against Randy and uh, newcomer Joe. They're up, he's up from somewhere for work, but Joe was really solid. Though they were throwing surefire, he's throwing fast side all the time. I think he's a game changer thrower, so he was throwing really solid. Um, I shot an 8.3 against Randy. Uh, he really likes throwing roll bags and playing really aggressive, so I just started throwing blocks the whole time, uh, forced him to hit those shots. They hit a nice airmail at the end of the game to win. Um, either way, just throwing consistent, making sure I can get my blocks and pushes. But we're throwing surefires, but we're throwing Bruce's surefires. They're less broken in than mine. So it's just an adjustment period. I'm used to like a crazy floppy, just melting surefire. So I had a couple cuts hang up on the hole on me, just shots that I'm used to making with mine that I have to adjust it and can't take as aggressive lines with these because they're just less floppy than mine. But good uh, good first game. I'm glad to get the first win out of the belt, and we'll move on to round two of winner's bracket. So I'll check in you guys after round two. In the first round of winner's bracket game two, we're playing against Matt and his partner, and they're throwing at cat twos, I believe, nice and broken in. So Matt starts with his first one a little right of the hole. Bruce goes off the back. Matt is able to make in his second bag, and when Bruce jams up into the right, definitely an opportunity for some points. Matt up four to one. Matt's able to finish in the third bag as well, and Bruce goes that one off the back. And Matt, with the eight, Bruce can slide in to limit the damage, but misses that one off the right as well. So we're looking at an eight to one round, so we start the game down seven to zero. The very next round, I want to get in on the fun of letting up a big round. So my opponent starts with this first one a little off to the right, and I immediately miss off the back left. He bounces off the back of the hole, so it gives me an opportunity to make up for my miss, but I give it right back off the left. He's able to make in his third bag, and I miss my third one off the left, actually knocking one off the back. He finishes up, and I have this big canal and somehow cannot hit it even with the fast side. So 8-3, to three, and I yell at Bruce, all right, Bruce, we're even. Now neither of us can have a big round left over, but we start the game down 12-0. to zero. As funny as it sounds, me giving up that big round actually helped us the most, I think, because it took the pressure off Bruce after giving up the seven. I think he felt really bad, and being able to take that pressure off him, Matt starts with the first one off the back left. Bruce throws a really nice blocker, forcing Matt to try to block behind, but misses it, and Bruce pushes it in nicely and replaces up the middle, so really take an opportunity. Matt misses off the right side here. Bruce sticking with fast side and a really nice collect, now setting nine to two. Matt's able to finish up with the five and Bruce here just a little bit off the left, but still a 10 to five round, getting us five points back and really flipping the momentum after we give up two big rounds. So now down 12 to five. The theme of big rounds continue. I only got one point, so it's now 12 to six, but Bruce has got first bag. He starts with his first one off a little bit to the right as a blocker and Matt goes front board. Bruce is able to lay his next bag on the left edge of the hole, probably gonna fall in with a tap. Matt misses a little bit off the left. Bruce goes, Bruce goes to the fast side, Pushes up his right bag and pulls the left bag a little bit closer and Matt goes off the right side. With fast side here, Bruce is unable to push up the middle, but Matt goes front board again. So we honestly should have scored even more points, but it was still a 6-1 to one round. Getting 5 points, so we bring it all the way back. We're now down 12-11. 
The very next round, the big rounds continue. I start with the first bag. Slides up nicely as a little blocker. He blocks behind. I immediately go for the right to left cut and hit a nice little cut collect. He tries to push through and pushes it up closer. Again, I go for the little right to left cut and miss a little bit short, a little bit disappointed that I don't block up into him. But when he gives it back to me by going off the back, I step out and ask him if he wants me to block behind or go for the cut push. I end up going for just the block behind, take the eight points because he's only at two. So now he either has to go for an air mail or possibly try to push in. So it's a smarter play. I definitely wanted to go for the cut push, but it makes a lot more sense. And I'm glad my partner called for it. When he misses a little bit off the right, we're going to finish up with another eight to three round, five more points. So we go up 16 to 12. A couple rounds later, the score is now 18-14. They have first bag, and Matt misses his first one off the back. So if Bruce is able to finish up, we'll get the three points we need to win. Really nice blocker in the way, forcing Matt to push through. Matt knocks Bruce's in, but maybe skids off a bit to the left. Bruce misses a little off to the left, but might actually pin that cat bag out. When Matt misses off the board to the right, now Bruce just needs to go on. He slides in his third bag nicely, so we're looking at a 7-1 to one right now coming into the last bag. Matt needs to pull both these in and flips over the back. So we're looking at just seven to two. Bruce throws it on for the eight to two round, but we get the six points we need. So we win the game 24 to 14. All right, round two, a winner's bracket. We won 21 to 12. Uh, so Bruce first round gives up a seven. My first round, I give up a five. So we got on 12 zero to start the game. And then uh, we didn't give up another point. We started getting, it was like big round, big round back and forth. It was like five, seven, five, five, one, seven, five, like just huge rounds, but we didn't give a point after that, got back on the horse, you know, uh, got back consistent, but it's nice to get the next win. Uh, I, I shot okay that game. Again, just uh, getting used to the bags. They, they kick a little bit more on me being a little bit less broken in, but no excuses. I uh, got to be able to throw them well. Bruce is throwing them well and he likes throwing them. So hopefully I can stay on the outside of the board. He seems to be good on the inside. Just try to stay consistent with what we're doing. Nice to get the second win. Uh, I think we'll have to win four if we win the next one then it's in the chair game so you got to win four to make the chair so uh we'll, we're playing against the team that's playing on the stream court right now uh the winner of that will play so uh might be on the stream might be on the sideboard either way let's try to get the next win i think we got two pretty hard wins out of the way so hopefully we can uh keep running it up uh play good i feel like i'm throwing fine which is nice so check in with you guys after game three of winners in the first round of Winners Game 3, we're on the stream court where our opponent starts with their first bag off the back left. Apologies for the right camera being frozen. I promise that we'll fix it uh, before this game's over. But Bruce is able to slide his first bag in and his opponent follows. Bruce slides the second one in as well and his opponent actually misses it off the back left. So Bruce, big opportunity to score here with two bags off the board. When she slides her third one on the board as well, he's able to finish up for the 10. So we're going to add a 10 to 5 round to get us 5 points. We start the game off 5 to 0. Fast forwarding in a couple of rounds, the score is now 5 to 3. They have first bag. When he starts with his first bag nicely in the hole, I'm able to follow up as well. These boards play a lot quicker than the uh, other boards. So the surefires were sliding really nice. But he makes a second one. I'm able to follow. And the other camera finally pops back up. He misses his third one off the right. I'm able to finish my third one, and I go in for the four-bagger to get a nice 12-8 to eight round, four points, get us a nice healthy lead to start 9-3. to three. After Bruce gives up a three, the score is now 9-6. to six. They have first bag, and he starts with his first one off the back right. They're throwing Vipers, so definitely a little bit quicker, but super hole-friendly on these boards. I'm able to make my first. He follows me with his second, and I'm staying very consistent this game, just right up the middle. He makes his third bag. And I'm able to follow as well, so guaranteed at least two points if I can finish up. But when he misses off the back left and I finish up the four-bagger, we get a nice 12-8 to eight round for another four points. So we go up 13-6. to six. After Bruce gives up one, it's 13-7. to seven. They got first bag. He starts with his first one nicely up the middle. And I'm able to stay consistent following him. So I haven't missed a bag in about three rounds now. He makes his second bag. And I finish, follow with the second bag. He's really solid and consistent, though. And I follow again. He finishes up with the four bagger. And then I choke here a little bit off the left. So first miss in about four rounds, but he gets the 12 to 10 round. And they're making a nice comeback now down 13 to 9. After Bruce gives up a two, it's 13 to 11. They got first bag. And my opponent starts with one off to the right. So if I stay consistent, it's at least two points, especially with that bully. I knock it out of 
airmail drag range. He makes his second bag, and I'm able to follow him nicely. And when he misses his third bag, almost off the back, I got four points if I could finish up. I bounce over the hole, but I knock him off, and then he actually knocks me in. But then he made a big noise like, oh, crud, and I kind of overguessed myself or got quick on my throw and threw off the right side of the board, but it's still a nine to four round. I should have slowed myself down, but we got uh, the five points to go up 18 to 11. Very next round, Bruce has got first bag and he starts with his first one nicely up the middle and his opponent misses a little off to the right. So he gets two points here if he can finish up. He makes the second bag nicely and she's able to just catch enough of the hole to slide in with those vipers. Bruce stays nice and consistent up the middle. She's able to hang on the hole so Bruce could possibly sneak around, but kind of jams up into her. Actually is better than going in the hole, forcing her to try to push everything through. And when it jams up for the 10 to 6 round, we get four points. So we win the game at 22 to 11. All right, round three of winners done on the stream. We played against Chuck and Anita, really, really solid team, both from out of town, so no idea what to expect, and they were very, very solid. Throwing series vipers, it's like throwing game changers, man. They say, oh, crap, and then it goes in the hole. You know, it's just how it works. But throwing the surefires, um, I was throwing really – I missed – I made 15 bags in a row, uh, just scoring points in there, but it had to be done because, I mean, he was 10, 8, 10, 10, 12 every single round. I got one big round where I actually choked a bag off the side. He was kind of like – he missed one and was saying like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, because he had a bad round and I kind of got distracted through too fast, missed off the side. Still got five, but could have been a lot more. Uh, but we got the win, 22 to 11, so nice to get that win. The next game is against Pat, who's the single state champion, and Bill, um, and that game is to go into the chair game. So, um, or no, it's the game for the chair, to make it into the championship game. So it'd be nice to finally, on the vlog, make it in the chair, guarantee ourselves a podium. Uh, but either way, you know, throwing really well, beating a lot of really good teams. The first three games were not easy by any means. So hopefully we can get through the next one. So uh, catch with you guys after game four. In the winner's finals of winner's bracket, I'm throwing against the state champ in singles, Patrick Sladek and his partner, Bill. And I start with my first bag and nicely up the middle. Pat has one of the flattest bags uh, around by far, but I'm able to start with my second one in. He follows me nicely. I missed my third one off the side, and he's not going to let me get away easily. He makes his third bag. I'm able to finish up for the 10, but he finishes nicely for the four bagger. So take a 12 to 10 start for a 2 to 0 lead to begin the game. After my partner gives up a three, they're now up five to zero to start the game. And Pat starts with his first one nicely up the middle, and I'm able to follow. He finally gives me a little bit of a break here by missing one off the right side. I'm able to punish it by sliding in, laying up two after two bags, and then he overcompensates and goes to the left. I'm able to stay nicely up the middle. He's able to finish out, and I can get four points here, which I'm able to finish up for the 12 day round, get us four points back. So we bring the game back to a five to four. After Bruce gets one point, the score is now five to five. I got first bag. And I start off with my first one up the middle nicely, staying nice and consistent. I get against Pat. He follows me nicely. I'm able to make in my second bag as well, and he's able to continue up the middle. Now I finally give one back to him, missing off to the left, and he's able to capitalize by sliding up the middle, and then immediately I overcompensate, catching the right edge of the hole. Thankfully, he gives me a freebie with two bumpers, missing it off to the right. So it's a 10-8 to eight round. They get two points and go up 7-5. to five. After Bruce gets two and I get two, the game's been pretty close up until this point, but here's the round that kind of blew the game wide open. Bruce starts with his first bag up the middle nicely, and then Bill hits the hole but ends up hopping over the back. So opportunity for points here when Bruce puts his second one in. And then the wheels start to come off the car here, so Bill slides one off the back. So now when Bruce goes in, he's laying at 9-1 to one after three bags. Bill's second one off the back, so it's get or third one off the back. It's going to be a really big round when Bruce finishes up for the four bagger. So Bill needs to go in to limit this to eight, and when he throws his last bag off the back as well, that's a twelve to one round, giving us eleven points, putting us the score at twenty to seven. A couple rounds later, after they've gotten a couple points, the score is now twenty to twelve. Bill's got first bag and starts with his first one a little bit kick off to the right. Bruce is able to stay nice and consistent up the middle. We only need one point here, so Bruce is already laying with two. And when Bill misses his second one off to the right and Bruce is able to make it in, we basically have our point locked up just by getting him on the board. When Bill goes off the back and Bruce just starts to throw the bags because the game is basically over, 
Bill goes for the airmail for fun because he knows the game's done, and Bruce slides in the last one for a 9-2 to round. So we get seven points, but we win the game at 25-12. to All righty, game four of winner's bracket. We took down as well. We got a 21-13, to 13, I think. Shooting against the state singles champ, Pat, he shot really well, shot a 9.2, but gave me some points here and there. I gave him a big five, but that was right after um, right after uh, my partner, Bruce, got an 11. So it was a close game. It was like 9-8, and then Bruce got an 11. Uh, Bill just kind of fell apart there at the end, but nice to get the win. So we're in the championship game, so we get to wait for a little bit here. But, hey, guaranteed either first or second, and then we have to be double dipped. So one more game. Let's get a dub for the vlog. It's been a while, and we deserve to have a good result. For once, I'd love to get a first place finish for you guys, but uh, hopefully we can run it up. You know, I'm going to be commentating here for a bit because we're going to be waiting uh, until all the loser practice games are done. But uh, catching you guys after the championship game. Hopefully it goes well. In the championship game, we get a run back against Patrick and Bill. Unfortunately, the right camera is frozen for this entire game on the stream. Someone unplugged it. So you're just going to have to trust me when I tell you what I shoot. But... Bruce starts with his first bag and nicely up the middle and Bill goes off to the side. So I even told Bruce in our game plan, I was going to try to keep Patrick at bay as he's the state singles champ and Bruce was going to be scoring all our points. So really nice block there, forcing Bill off to the side and then really nice cleanup. So really taking advantage of the blocker there, sitting nine to two on the round. And when Bill goes short again, Bruce goes for the step out, get around and hits a really nice get around shot. So laying a 12 to 3 now forcing bill to go out to try to collect just to limit the damage but when you go out it's a more difficult shot you have less board and he misses off to the right so right out of the gate 12 to 3 round we start the game up 9 to 0. The very next round I do exactly what I'm not supposed to do and that's what give Pat a bunch of points to catch up but I miss my first bag off the front left and Pat's able to go around me easily. My second bag I end up going off the back and when Pat slides the second one in I'm down 6 to 1 after two bags. I missed my third one off the left as well, and he slides in his third, so I need to get in here, which I do for the five, just to be able to slightly clean up. Thankfully, he gives me it back by staying a little bit short of the hole, but it's still a 10 to five round. I get five points right back, so now our lead is cut to nine to five. The very next round, Bruce continues on the scoring train for me, but Bill starts with his first bag off the back, so opens the opportunity for Bruce again. But when Bruce goes front board, he kind of squanders the first bag opportunity. But Bill gives it right back again with another one off the back, and Bruce is able to capitalize on this one. So he's up three after two bags. Bill is finally able to answer with his third bag, and Bruce stays nice and consistent up the middle. And when Bill actually misses his last bag, big opportunity here for six, and Bruce gives it back with one off the back. So... Six to three round, but we still get three points, so we go up 12 to five. After I wash and then Bruce scores two, we're now up 14 to five a couple rounds later. I got the first bag here, and I'm able to stay consistent this round. I start with my first bag, nicely slide up the middle, and Pat gives me one by missing off to the left. So I got points if I could stay up the middle. I stay consistent on the second bag. He makes his second bag. Stay consistent on the third. He actually stays stepping out trying to collect his bag and misses that one off to the left. I'm able to finish up for the four bagger and he goes a little bit hard off the back, knocking one of his bags in, but ends up being a 12 to seven round, giving me five points. So we go up 19 to five. The very next round, Bruce has got the first bag and he starts with his first one nicely up the middle. So we only need two points. So keeping the pressure on Bill, he's been struggling a little bit this game. So staying up the middle will definitely force him to keep making shots. Bill's bag kicks a little bit on the right over the hole, so that's the two points we needed if Bruce could finish up, but he mixes his next bag off the back right, giving it back. When Bill misses off to the right again, Bruce happens to give it back again. So still, the game is not locked up if Bill can stay up the middle here. He's able to make his third bag. Bruce is able to finish up for the eight, so forces Bill to go in for the wash to save the game. And when Bill misses a little bit off to the left, we're looking at an eight to six round. We get the two points we need, so we win the game at 21 to five. All right, guys, code is on, car's warming up, boards are put away, but it's not for a loss. We got a dub on the vlog. We were on the stream, we won the vlog finally, we won an event because we've been sucking for this long. So it's really nice to finally get a win. Got a really solid partner in Bruce. He carried my ass in the championship game. It's the worst I've shot all day. We were sitting for like an hour in between chair game and finals. 
So it's just, man, did I get cold. We were playing cash games afterwards and I felt like I'd never thrown before. So either way, it's really nice to get a win, get a little, recoup a little money from this last weekend that I lost it all at Triple Crown basically. So nice to get a win for the vlog. I've been perpetually first out of the money slash fourth place. And I got a win when there was 30 people here. So it's the biggest night we've had so far this winter. So to win that one feels really, really good, but really nice to take it down. So I hope you guys like this vlog. Appreciate you sticking by all the vlogs where I suck and I get like sixth place and you finally get to see a win. So I you know, appreciate you guys stopping by for another vlog and I hope you have a great rest of your day and rest of your week. And I'll catch you guys in the next video, whatever it is. Thanks for all the support. Have a good one, guys.